Welcome to the show today. Today, I thought it was pretty cool. We saw some awesome drills put out, I, I believe, by the NFL. We've got uh, Denzel Perryman. He had a, a little video shoot with four drills, and we've got to bring it to our audience because they're pretty great. You know, we've well, this, done... Go this ahead. first drill is a four-corner drill, and it's a, it's a great drill for the speed and agility, but also we're working on technique. We're working on linebacker skills yeah overall what we've we've done some variations of box drills and things you can find them kbandstraining.com we've got a lot of different variations but this one is pretty cool it's a, a little bit different what you're going to do is you set up five cones or four cones five yards apart if you're a little bit younger you can always tighten these dimensions up a little bit older you can stretch them a little bit kind of depending on what you want to do but you want to keep it a little bit tight don't put them 20 yards apart and then you're going to move through different variations here. Let's get specifically into the form and what you're going to be doing. All right, when we're first starting on the drop drill, first thing we're going to do is go to one corner, and then we're going to drop at a 45-degree angle. We're moving to our read, which is pass. Then he's going to laterally shuffle if the quarterback moves one direction or the other, and then he's going to read run, and he's going to go to the – other corner with speed. He's going up now to make the play. I see you, you're comparing this whole thing to reading the quarterback, and that's what he is. He's a linebacker. So this drill is great for kind of getting your eyes spun around, figuring out how to make your body move in different angles with speed while still being able to read the quarterback. You don't want to turn your head. You know, on that drop and read, it's not a drop and turn. You know, anytime we've worked with younger athletes, it always seems as though – we get a little robotic. Okay, I'm going to this cone over here. I turn around. I run to that cone. Now I turn. No, no, no. You got to keep your eyes on the quarterback or on the coach out in front and just try to make sure that you're reading the angles at which you're going. Always look in the opposite direction. So that 45-degree angle, you want to make it feel as natural as you can when you get in that game-like situation and you're trying to read the quarterback. Well, you, you need to open up those hips. Now you're going to go to your drop spot at a 45-degree angle. But if you get there fast – and your eyes aren't on the quarterback or finding the ball, didn't really do you any good. Yeah, take a look at his form now, too. When he's dropping and reading, he's using his arms. A lot of times with youth athletes, arms are very lazy when you're moving in a backwards direction. I don't know what it is about it, but there's something about that turn and explode and ripping through with your arms. You've really got to get out and drive and accelerate so that you can be in very good control when you get to that back cone. Hit the back cone, square up. Then you shuffle across, and it doesn't need to be a high clicky shuffle, right? You know, sitting high, tossing the feet together, that kind of a thing. Make sure the kids are really getting out there and trying to be as explosive as possible. He definitely runs the drill pretty good. I mean, I would say he's probably much faster than that <laughs> if you really wanted to see him on a field. Oh, yeah. But, you know, he put in a little bit of effort, and it was cool seeing him try to help some guys out, show you how to move through the movements a little bit explosive. And then his last sprint out, of course, they kind of incorporated the football with a catch. Well, you'll notice that in all these drills, these guys finish. That's We want to make sure that once I've hit that cone, I'm still going, I'm moving towards the ball, or I'm moving towards my spot. That's what I call finishing, going through what is expected sure, in and, the drill. And, and that may, you make a good point there, too. For coaches and trainers, make sure that you're putting the football at the end of this drill somewhere where they've got to go get it. Don't just hit them right at the cone. You know, make them explode through that area so that they can get the football and then turn up the field for maybe a 15, 20-yard sprint. Well, if you got younger athletes at this level, they know what's going on. At a younger level, I always like to incorporate the ball. It gives me something at the end to look forward to. And you know what? In a game, it's going to happen. Now, this, this kind of drill, we're going to go through four of these today, so stick around. But what you could do is easily set up stations. If you're working individually and you're trying to, you know, get a little bit better at your sport, you know, set up all four of these drills and rotate between the two, you know, or all four of them. You'll get in, uh, you know, anywhere between three and four repetitions at each spot, then move to the next station. If you're working out in a group, that can really be effective to kind of move from station to station to station. You don't have to go out and get you some crazy trainer that's going to run you through all these. You know, utilize these as a tool, set up the form, try to mimic the movements, and then move explosively as possible from each individual Yeah, cone. if you've got a group, do the stations. That way everybody's moving. And if you're training your young athlete, then you can just move the cones quickly. We're, and we, you'll see in another drill where we're going to start to work on not having the cones because we've done enough repetitions 
our body needs to feel where am I going to. The next drill is going to be a bit of a, a turn and read, basically. You don't need cones. Just get out in some open area. You're trying to mimic, uh, you know, an interception. You've read the ball. You're exploding out. So drop step, same 45-degree angle that you're drilling with the first one in that original drop step. You'll drop that 45-degree angle, turn into a slight shuffle, reading the quarterback, and then you'll sprint out for the coach or your dad or your trainer to kind of hit you on the way out. Yeah, you're looking at getting to your spot quickly. So you're going, say you're going left, you're going to go 45 degrees, get to that spot. Now you've read that the ball's going the other direction. And now you got to change direction and move laterally and then step up and make a play. Yeah, once again, with that sideways shuffle, notice that he does this. And any advanced athlete, you're never standing really tall. You know, anytime that we see these young kids, you've got this clicky shuffle method, right? You, you jump up high, you click your heels together. You never want to do that. You want to have contact with the ground at all times so that you can change direction left or right. So keep in mind that once you take that drop and read, that slight little shuffle, stay low in your feet, try to stay in contact with the ground, and then turn and sprint. And of course, you know, you're working with dad, you got to work on them QB skills here. You know what I mean? You, you got to make sure that you're giving decent passes out That's there in the right. flats. Well, you, you'll notice that they're always moving their feet. And, and the footwork, keeping the feet far enough apart, keeping the hips square with the line of scrimmage if you can, and then being able to move. You've got to be able to change direction quickly or play's going to beat you. Yeah, knee, you know, if you ever have a chance to take a little bit of video footage of yourself, stick it side by side with some of these more advanced level athletes, and you really do want to mimic the movements. It's a powerful, powerful tool these days. Cameras are everywhere. Don't just shoot a little bit of video of your face and smiling and trying to put something on Instagram. Check out your form. Compare it back to the original footage. Are your knees coming through in the right areas? Are you getting a little bit of a clicky heel thing on your shuffles? Did your eyes stay on the quarterback the entire time? A lot of those things you can easily see in video. Make a change and then get on to the next repetitions. You know, you, I would suggest doing something like that. Filming one day. Just film the exercises. Then when you come back the next week to run through these drills, now you've got a couple little critique things you're working with and, and you want to make sure that you're progressing. Well, you sometimes filming yourself is a little bit frustrating. No, not think, in 2022. Yeah, you don't think I did that. But, you know, <laughs> think of it. I'd like to think of it in this terms. I'm trying to get better. And what would someone that's watching my game film say? You know, Am I, am I moving my feet? Am I getting caught flat-footed? What can they do to beat me? Well, and it's a great recommendation anyway. you got to think that most of the, the recruiting and things like that are going to occur from a highlight reel of them seeing you play. I mean, in, in this day and age, that's how you're going to get to the next level in pretty much almost any sport. They're going to see video footage of you. So if you want the bare bottom, the roots of the issue – Check yourself out in the footage. What's your footwork look like? What's your body look like? Are you moving like the pros? If you're moving like the pros, you know, you're going to be one step closer as you progress and get a little bit older to being a little bit more of an advanced level mover, right? Well, if, you, you get a chance to, to see what your progress is. This is right. where I started. Now I'm feeling better about it. Now I've got all those reps in. I'm doing it just naturally. It's instinct. Yeah, it's kind of, it's it's interesting because most people I feel are using it just for, you know, their Instagram page and things like that. If you're already shooting the video, then just make sure that you take that time to make the comparisons. Does that make sense? Yeah, I like to, I like to talk about it. I like to make sure the athlete knows why we're doing this. He's opening his hips. If, if he's trying to get back there while he's keeping his eyes on the ball, all those things make you a better player. So we're trying to make you a better athlete and we're trying to, up your level of performance. Exercise three, I feel like is one of those exercises that everybody's kind of seen a video of, but do it wrong. You know, and he even mentions it in the video and he makes a really good point. Don't stand behind the bags in this three bag drill. It's made for quickness, trying to be able to move quickly from side to side. So you're going to go down, back, down, back, but get on top of the bag so that you're actually stepping over. And why is that good? You, you, you may wonder why does that matter? You want to work on getting your knees up. If you want to be very uh, a high-level athlete, you don't want to be tripped up at the line, especially in football. Not every sport correlates quite like football, but there's hands everywhere. There's people everywhere. Can you still move by getting your feet up? Can you still become explosive getting over the top of something? You know, this is a, a great drill that mimics that kind of a thing. Well, he's, he's telling you, if you cheat, it's going to turn up in the game somewhere. So if you're kind of scooting your feet versus lifting those knees and driving you're not going to be as effective you're not going to get there as fast and then like you said you get your feet caught up and 
you know, you're done. Yeah, and, and this drill specifically, and, and like the other ones, it, it, these are really good station drills. If you're going out and you're doing your ladder work and having a speed training session and you're specific to football, each one of these kind of correlates pretty great together. You can move from station to station. It's not like you're doing 40-yard sprints then you go over here and you do 60s and you're already toast, right? Each one of these is kind of a, a little bit of a bigger mover start. Then you moved into the longer runs in the second drill. And then this third one is kind of really tight. You know, get the feet moving quick. Give yourself a little bit of rest before we get on to exercise four. Well, these athletes, these drills, I think, are good for all athletes, but specifically linebackers. If you do all four of these drills, you have really prepared yourself for what your job's going to be when you're on the field. Absolutely. I mean... To be quite honest, uh, it's kind of funny. As long as we've been doing this and making drills, it's really cool to see these NFL guys come out and make a couple videos. I don't know if it was sponsored by the NFL or if it was a, a channel that they utilized, but uh, it's kind of cool watching NFL guys get in there back with the community, kind of chit-chatting a little bit about some of the drills they're doing. Well, I think we get to know these guys a little bit better, and we get to see that they put in the work. They understand these aren't just drills. We're not just going through the motions. We are – working on our skills for specific reasons exactly it's uh you know you don't always get that sneak peek you know you kind of get these highlight reels of only what they want you to see you know and yeah i would be curious to know how often they're running these are these just in the summer camps they're doing are they doing these things during season i mean for high school athletes right now in july it's a big time for speed and agility kind of cranking back up for high school football this would be a perfect time to incorporate these kind of drills without a doubt that made me wonder when I see an empty stadium here. So uh, they brought him in here for a specific pur purpose. It's fun to see because you know that this guy has done it on the field on Sunday afternoon, and he's telling us, hey, this is what I do. Yeah. The last drill here is going to be three cones. You put them five yards apart. It's not your traditional combine drill. It's a little bit different. You're going to have five yards apart in an L, and you're going to do two different versions of it moving uh, on your first break to the right. And then you'll do another one to the left. But you'll start with a shuffle. You'll drop and read, moving back to the farthest cone back as fast as you can. And then you'll sprint out at that angle once again with a catch. It's a little, it's very similar to the four corner drill that you started with. But it's kind of nice to go full circle and come back to a little bit different variation. You know as well as I do when you're training a group of kids, trying to explain to them every single separate movement on station to station to station can kind of get a little bit confusing for some people to remember as it moves through the training session. But if you're coming back to an exercise that's uh, a little bit similar to another one they've done, you can tell the younger kids kind of catch on a lot quicker when it's like, you know, it was pretty much what we were doing the first, going to be a little bit more of a variation, uh, and everybody gets on the same page a lot well, quicker. Well, it, it gives you a chance to break it down. So you've explained the other drill. Now we're going to explain this one. We're moving one direction. We're going left because that's what we read. Now it's the old panic thing. I move left. Break I, back. I yeah. read the I read the play action. Oops, now I got to get back to my spot. Sure, sure. And, it, you know, it's kind of nice, too, because it uses a lot of the similar movements. So whenever you're designing a workout program, you know, this is for all those dads out there. When you're trying to figure out what to do with your kid, it's nice to kind of mimic a little bit of the same movements from station to station. So you're not having, that can be the focus of the day, right? We, in most of the, in a couple of these drills now, we've got that drop and read element. So after we've uh, really kind of focused on form on the first specific exercise, now as you move to the other couple stations, you're able to reinforce that with a slightly different movement, but generally the same mechanics. Does that make sense? Right. And again, he's doing the repetitions because he's got to be thinking read, run, do I need to drop? Are we in coverage? Am I man-to-man -man or am I blitzing? But all that over the rep, over doing repetition, repetition, now it just starts to come natural because his spot is basically in that middle. He may only have, what, maybe 10 by 10, 15 by 10. So got to be ready to cover that spot. Yeah, and it, it's kind of interesting, too, when you're thinking about uh, the evolution of doing your training, right? One advice that I would give is if you're out of season, these types of stations, you're breaking down mechanics. Can you become faster? Can you do them better? Time them. Try to start seeing if you can actually get better at getting to the last cone. When you're doing the bag drills and you're going down, back down, you know what, what times can you get when you're going through those? This is the time to start doing that type of training. Does that it, make yeah, it and, makes total sense. And one thing you might do in some of these drills is 
that, you know, when he's expecting the ball, that's not when you throw it. Make sure that he's looking and dropping and opening the hips and maybe about halfway to that cone, chuck it at him to see if he's really got his eyes on the ball. Remember, we got to get to our spot, but we got to be prepared to make a move and go a different direction. Yeah, I like that. Uh, variations are always good to keep everybody, you know, light on their feet, keep them on their toes, make sure they're actually doing what you're telling them to do. You know, on that shuffle portion in the box drill, are they watching you really? Are they working on just piddly paddly, you know, moving sideways? So it, that's a good advice, you know, mix it up a little bit, make some variations here and there to keep everybody on their toes. But uh, overall, this is a great set of four drills that you can use off season right now is prime time conditioning coming up towards the football season. So make sure you incorporate these things. If you like what we're doing, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Hit that little bell. I think all these people tell you to do so give that a try. And uh, we got some more videos coming out this week.